Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of mainly La Liga, Liga Portugal. I really didn't get to see much uh, this weekend. Uh, but yeah, La Liga, it felt like a big weekend where we may just have a hint of maybe a title race coming. Still all Real Madrid. But um, it was... It was an interesting weekend and especially two uh, informed teams as of late, although one already has been derailing another one also uh, suffered a loss. So as I said, uh, quite a few things to talk about, uh, some interesting uh, results and especially uh, quite some goals scored. So I think we can uh, dive straight in. I, again, I want to give you the results in Portugal. And yes, at this moment, uh, Liga Portugal is probably the one where I'm least putting my focus on. But it's mainly due to the fact not being able to see as many, many games and also that the league is kind of a three-way race. I mean, yes, I watched the Dutch league a little bit more because I... Honestly, I have some more interest in the Dutch league because of Ajax, because of PSV uh, and now Feyenoord. Um, but the title race in uh, Portugal is an interesting one, uh, but they all keep winning. And that kind of makes it a little bit uh, weird in, in a way. But we have a big one come, 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 coming up in a second. But you see the results. I mean, Gilles Vizan Sporting, 3-0. Benfica, 7-1 against Maritimo. And then a portrait Vizela, 4-0. All of them keeping uh, pace and it all will come down to the head-to-heads. And then um, Braga is kind of this one team that hangs in between the top three and the bottom that is very squished together. Also get the win. So, you know, uh, you see uh, Portugal is very interesting. I mean, if you follow any of the teams that are um, below... There, uh, the Portuguese league is super exciting because it changes every week. Uh, it goes up and down, and not only in the extra standings, but also in the expected standings because the teams are very, very squished together. As I said, uh, we have one round coming up, and this is uh, just before for New Year, and it, of course, has the big one between Porto and Benfica. I think that's a game to look forward to. Um, I, for me, Benfica definitely will need a win in there. Uh, to mount a proper title challenge uh, because they find themselves a little bit off the pace with four four points of must win for Benfica at Porto. Um, I have a feeling it will turn out to be a draw, but you know, we we, we see Porto at the moment still the favorites thanks to having probably a better uh, rating. Also, um, yes, they are the Europa League. I still think that they are the strongest team. And it might help them actually to not uh, continue in the Champions League. But uh, we got to see that. So, I, have the, I mean, I'm doing my best to spend some time in Port Portugal because they deserve it. Uh, we got to go to Spain. Um, the first couple of re results, I unfortunately didn't see any highlights. Although Celta against Espanyol are two teams that I like. Celta winning 3-1. And Rayo, uh, a team that are completely surprising, uh, getting win after win and being fun to watch. A team that come, come, comes up and is fun to watch uh, is a rarity. Although, you know, we had Leeds, we had Brentford and, and so on in England. But in general, you wouldn't expect a team uh, to come, come, come up to play exciting uh, soccer. Um Real Sociedad via Real is kind of uh, was kind of a marquee matchup in this um, round, but the wheels are coming off for Real Sociedad. Yes, they took the lead and they deserved all uh, that, 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 that lead very, very well. They were largely better game, creating more and more chance. But via Real now with Gerard Moreno back is a completely different proposition because now they have to punch up front. Because what was their, their problem all season long? They didn't finish their chances. And now they have Gerard Moreno back. And it already shows. I mean, since since he's back, the uh, form curve has been uh, going up. He gets equalized, I think, after Dani Parejo corner. Um, and then the game uh, tipped him in more when uh, Mikel Oriasabal makes a rather rough challenge and with his thoughts touches the... Um, uh, uh, thigh, or, you know, the calf uh, or, uh, of a um, VRL player. At that point, you cannot make such a challenge. I mean, uh, it was every bit as Harry Kane, except that there was a uh, real contact being made. And um, um, oh yeah, Sabal is, is sent off. And that in the game, that where you had the feeling that there are that kind of a, not only needs to get something, but they actually have the chance to get something, completely turns then. And then uh, Gerard Moreno scores a uh, second one. Um, 
and assists a third in stoppage time. A big win for Villarreal uh, that might get them back on track. And then we have green shoots at Barcelona. Uh, chooses as the headlines and uh, definitely uh, there is something there with all the young players. I think Xavi, they played very well. It really has to be said. I joined that game uh, late in the first half. It was 2-0 and I still had the feeling I think Elche might come back in this one. Uh, joined, I said it was one of the games that I landed then on and then we had um, dinner. Uh, and then I come back and it's 2-2. Uh, but when, when I uh, rewatched the highlights and a little bit off of, of, of the game, Barcelona really played well and they have a lot of good stuff going for them in the young players. And this is the remarkable thing and this might actually now work sooner than we, uh, than we would expect, you know, uh, with your Gavis, with your Nikos. I mean, Pedro is out with uh, Jutkla. Uh, really uh, playing in a way that makes Barca fans probably quite happy. Now, uh, is it very stable? Not quite yet, as we saw. But two goals in the first half, Jutkla and Gavi, and probably should have should, 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 more the game could have been very well settled at halftime. However, after halftime, not only did El did Elche make uh, tons of changes, they also uh, then very quickly got two two goals. I mean, the first one through that that the Morente, a great shot. I don't wanna say that uh, Ter Stegen is all that um, guilt free there. And then a minute later, and I actually, I came back, I thought I just have to find the spot where they scored the goal because I have a feeling those goals came in short succession without knowing anything. And this is exactly how it is. Within a minute then, Morente again assists Mia. Uh, and again, it was kind of, um, you know, uh, just staying on the one side. I have a feeling he needed to get there a little bit sooner. And then you think, oh, is now Barca all deflating game? No, but they rallied. I mean, Nico came on, Ricky Puch came on. Uh, I mean, De Jong got whistled off. And then it is Gavi assisting Nico for the 3-2 winner. And I guess this could mean a whole lot for Barcelona, this, this job. Because they fought back. They were down. Uh, they played brilliantly. They were down. They had to con 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 concede the equalizer. But they fought themselves back and they got an important win. I think going forward, this might actually pay dividends. What also might pay the dividends is now proof that the new camp is being uh, expanded and refurbished, uh, which I can understand. It is an old stadium, so probably, probably they need to be a little bit, but they have to take a big loan for a club that already has no money. I found it in in interesting, but I think this is an investment well worth taking, especially now that Real Madrid are also more or less ready with the new Bernabeu. I think this was sorely, sorely needed. However, the eyes were all on the Sevilla Atletico Madrid matchup. Uh, Sevilla basically gasped because they had to play in the Copa del Rey, um, going back and forth there. I again, Copa del Rey, I will join late, late, later on. There are certain things that uh, I don't need to cover every competition here or watch every competition. Uh, I have to say, this was a game that in the first half maybe had a little bit. Uh, a great goal by Rakitic to say as it often Atletico Madrid Cesare getting the equalizer through Felipe, but I gotta say the second half was awful. I mean, there was nothing really there. You could see that Sevilla is tired and Atletico Madrid currently don't have the means. And I actually thought that early in the second half, Atletico Madrid, there was a little bit there, but uh, there's a little bit, there's this assuredness, this cockiness from Ram uh, from Ram Atleti is a little, a little bit missing. And then they get, uh, they concede a late Ocampo's goal, who then actually had to come off because he felt dizzy uh, in stoppage time, which uh, was weird in a way. But uh, I guess it was, uh, you know, the physical demands on Sevilla were a rather, rather big, and it's not a quick question how, how, how many players will actually be there for the game tonight, which we'll talk about in a second, which is uh, kind of a big one as well. But with that win, Sevilla kind of, sort of, a little bit keeps touch with Real Madrid, just uh, barely, but yeah. I also felt that the referee a little bit lost control over the game. Uh, what is worrying, I think, for Atletico Madrid is that their, 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 their defense doesn't necessarily deserve the name. And even Oblak, who has been their outstanding player for years, is not having a great season. So I think all of that 
you gotta be a little bit worried uh, about Atletico Madrid at this moment. Uh, a brilliant game that I didn't see squat was Athletic Bilbao against Betis. A perfect three to win for, for, for Bilbao. They took an early lead through Iñaki Williams. Juanmi uh, pulls back and after that Fekir gives Betis the lead. However, Iñaki Williams with a second one in the 72nd and then a late winner through the Marcos. Give Athletic Club a very important uh, win there. Not much I can say about Real Madrid because against Cadiz because you know no Modric no party in man in many ways it was a uh, poor poor performance and yeah Eden Hazard um, still has a lot to catch up and I'm not sure uh, if he actually can. And then yesterday and a little bit uh, regret not watch, watching it between Levante and Valencia. Levante, a team that still hasn't won. Levante, a team that I always have to have, have, have the feeling is much better than their current standings. And they showed it because um, they got uh, a 2-0 lead by the 24th through Campania, who actually had the penalty saved but on the rebound. And then uh, Roger Mati giving them uh, a 2-2 lead, but just, Gonzalo Gidesh just before the half with a wonderful move uh, makes it 2-1 uh, after Hugo Duro assist. And then... They concede a quick uh, penalty and uh, Carlos Soler uh, equalizes. And then again, uh, the 3-2, a wonderful move. The way Gonzalo Gadesh uh, gets Soler and he moves past the goalkeeper. Uh, really, really great stuff. And Valencia turns, turns, turns the game around and thought that they had, had one and Gonzalo Gadesh uh, gets a, th a fourth one. However, and the uh, stops of Ripardi pulls one back and there were maybe uh, a push at least to get a 4-4 draw. It's too little for Levante and Levante, a uh, team that ha seemingly was established up there, at this moment looked like a very, very certain relegation candidate. Uh, as I said, we have matches come coming up. It's uh, three mega matches and one that is kind of taken or or already from early. Uh, we have today when this video posts via Real against the Alaves and of course the big one between Sevilla and Barcelona and I normally would favor Sevilla in this one but given how gassed Sevilla actually looked in many ways and how Barcelona you know it's it's it is a toss-up it is a game that despite the late kick of time I really would like to watch to be honest um we also have then on Wednesday Granada against Atletico Madrid so Atletico Madrid has a game, game in hand that uh, they probably will need a win there um and then uh, on the same uh, night in the evening another classic uh, with Atletico Club against Real Madrid um yeah that is, you know, re remember not too long ago that two played a makeup game where Athletic Club actually would have deserved a point at Madrid. Um, and yeah, with eight wins in, in a row, I'm not sure how Real Madrid is now coping with some absences as well. So uh, the rest of the schedule, yes, I know the games, but uh, it's so much in flux that I didn't want to put anything up there. But it's, uh, the rest of round 21 will be played uh, in mid-January. So long way to go from so yeah, that was it for me from the Iberian Peninsula. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. Please drop a line below if you want to add anything and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.